Hi guys, welcome to Get Your Buzz On, episode 14. I am so excited for my special guest. Cesar Garcia. With? Rocky Mountain Mortgage Company, sorry. <laughs> and he brought this awesome bottle of wine called Black Muskrat. Yeah, Black Muskrat. And tell me about it. Uh, so me and my fiance Gina were super obsessed with this local winery at Aridoso, um, uh, Noisy Water. So we, we get our wines there. It's, there's a little description in the back. It tells you it's like a little sweet red and it's got like a little chart in the back. Oh, so, I see. A little see. sweet, light body red. So I'm down to try it. I'm like, I'm always down. Yeah. Let's cheers. Cheers. Thank you for having me. No props. Oh my God, that's really good. How good is that? And I don't like red wine at all because it's like too dry for me. Really? Yeah. I've but this like, is really good. I've watched all the other episodes and I'm like, all right, she's drinking some bubbly reds, so I'm doing yeah. something sweet. This but is perfect. I'm like. Nice. Don't worry, towards the middle of it, you're going to be singing and dancing. So Perfect. We'll good. try. We'll try to get on your TikTok. <laughs> she's going to make me TikTok famous. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So tell us about yourself. Um, what a lot of people don't know is I've known Caesar for many, many years. Yeah. And um, what I love about you is your energy and you bring such fun vibes and um, you've been around the real estate business for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, so tell us like how you started and everything. So I started working at a call center, um, Saratoga Homes back in 2008. Um, but even before that, I was working at a Taco Cabana. Yeah. I worked there for a full four weeks. Um, and then uh, I had a teacher at Montwood High School, and she, she told me, she was like, hey, there's an office job opening up at, at a local home builder. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get to work with clients and, and, and experience some sales. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I, I showed up. I interviewed. Yeah. And I got hired. But I didn't know what I was getting hired to do. I walked in, and it was a call center, and I was like, What? Like, this is a call center? Yeah. Like, I was like, all right, it's better than, than making tacos at Taco Cabana. So and how like, old are you when you started there? So I was a senior in high school, 2008. Um, so I was literally 16 years old when I started. And I turned 17, like, when, when I was a month in. Yeah. So I was a, I was a little baby. <laughs> a little, little chiquillo. <laughs> um, so I was in the call center for a little bit. Then, then I set some model homes. Again, still in high school, 17 years old. And a couple of months later, uh, Gracie Estep, thank you so much, Gracie, she hired me at the, the mortgage company there to be a receptionist when I was 17, and, and I immediately fell in love with it. So I worked at the mortgage company for a little bit, and, and then I sold homes for a couple of years, and then Victoria's husband, Justin, was nagging me to go work at Rocky Mountain. Um, but thank you so much, Justin, because it, it's been an experience, and, and I really love doing mortgage loans. It's, it's where I feel happy, and, and man, it's been... 11 years now that's yeah, crazy blink of an eye and it, it's been forever so how has it been with you guys in COVID? i know everyone's handling it different ways how has rocky <clears throat> been or do you personally with loans and everything well we've been very fortunate and very blessed um in understanding that we're a quote unquote essential business but it, it we've kept our doors open uh you know we've limited the amount of people that come into our offices we've asked most of our customers that come in to wear masks um, but we understand the, the important role we play to our community. You know, a buyer coming in to get a mortgage loan leads back to a builder that's selling a house, a real estate agent representing that borrower, um, and, and everyone from the framers to the painters to the people inside the office, the payroll, the HR, so that one customer coming in to purchase a home just trickles down to everyone involved from insurance companies to title companies to mortgage companies to, to everyone in the spectrum. Um, so we, we've remained consistent, we've kept our doors open, and, and th thankfully we've been super, super busy. Yeah, you guys are you're yeah. freaking popular. Blessed. So yeah, yeah, so that's awesome. Having wine at 11 in the morning. <laughs> hey, you know, I know the boss, so you're fine. I'm calling a favor. Yeah, exactly, you're good, you're good. So how, uh, what makes you so different? I mean, there's a ton of loan officers out there, obviously. Mm -hmm. What makes you so different from everyone else? So my, I guess what separates me is that not only have I done mortgage loans, but, but I've, I've done everything from the ground up. Like I mentioned, I, I worked at a call center. I've sold homes as a builder rep. I, I, I do the mortgage loans now. And even before then, I was, I mean, I was a receptionist at a mortgage company, you know. So I've, I've had tons of years of experience. I've, I've worked with a lot of people in the industry from, from real estate agents to, to brokers to, to a lot of people that have mentored me over the years. Um, 
But I think the biggest part is over these last 10 years, I've been able to make a lot of mistakes yeah. and, and learn from those. Um, and, and I've always said my biggest mistakes have, have been what, what's taught me the most. So it's, it's I mean, I come with, a, with 11 years of experience, 11 years of mistakes and 11 years of knowledge. Yeah. But I think, man, I was 17 when I started. I know. That's crazy. That's when I met you. Yeah. When you and your parents were bullying me in here. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> So what has been, who has been some of your biggest mentors as you, when you started coming into the business? Because you're young, obviously. Um, it, it's a long list, uh, but I've been blessed to have a bunch of great managers. Like I mentioned, uh, Grace Eastep, Dennis Eastep, Martin Talamantes, um, Lane Harris, Fernando Hermosillo. I, I worked with Saratoga Holmes, uh, Charlie Bombach, your, your husband, Justin. Um, I mean, I've, I've had a wealth of, of people that have taken me under the wing and, and shared their experience with me. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. I've, I'm, I'm, I've realized that I've got a lot of experience and a lot of great people, man, including your dad. You know, your dad, I, I came in here earlier and, and he's sitting there and sharing some tips and tricks. And it's always so nice to be welcomed by, by people that you want to be around and, and people that want to share their experience and their knowledge with you yeah. just to make you a better person yeah. for no other reason than, than they, they want you to grow as a human being. And I've been so fortunate in the last 10, 11 years, everyone I've come in contact with has, has opened their doors. I mean, your parents, you, you know, you guys have always been super, super helpful. But it's, it's really amazing that, that all these people have been happy to share their information with me. But I think, too, it has to do with you being uh, open yeah. to any type of comments or anything like that and your energy, too. Um, Thank you. you have a very positive energy and we can give each other a hard time and <laughs> it's all good. I think it, it's like builds that honest relationship. So I, that's what I am glad about. What has been like some of the best advice you got from those mentors? Some of the best advice and it's been translated time and time and time again in different, different contexts. And, and I've, I've shared this with other loan officers is to control what you can't control yeah. and that you can't control, just, just leave it in God's hands. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we have so many things that go on throughout the day from family and friends to business, to realtors, to the people you're working with. And just, just your phone blowing up, your emails going off. So you have to really kind of simmer down and decide, all right, what am I going to control? What can I help with? And, and what really isn't in my control? And then let you know, let the process go. Yeah. And it, it's just so hard to really decide, okay, am I really trying to solve this problem or is this problem just going to ruin my day? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's probably some of the best advice is control what you can and what you can't, just move on. Yeah. Well, and if, if people don't know you, you and your fiance are both loan officers. Yes, 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 yes. So you guys do with the same... We compete. We yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so how does that work out with you guys? Um, it's a very interesting dynamic because, so me uh, at Rocky Mountain Mortgage, we, we're the preferred lender to most builders in town. We do a lot of resales, we do a lot of refis, and we just have a big book of business, you know, with what is like 25 to 30 builders mm -hmm. in town. We, we service a big portion of them. Whereas she, uh, over at, at her mortgage company, she's tailoring to one builder. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have the same amount of stress, we have the same amount of problems, just in a different kind of tone. Um, but, you, We've become really good about getting home. How's your day? Good. Um, I ran into this issue today. Cool. 10 minute conversation and we're done. Yeah. Because, you know, by the time you get home, you're like done talking about work. Yeah. And then it's like, you had that problem? Yeah, me too. And it's like, cool. What did you do? This. All right. Done. Let's open a bottle of wine. Let's yeah. simmer down a little bit. Yeah. You're like, let's eat. Let's like chill yeah. and everything. I'm sure Justin comes home with some of those same problems too, right? Well, and, and my problem is I don't stop. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's not a 10 minute conversation. I'm like, no, I need more information. <laughs> or, or, you know, the same way he's yeah. like, oh, it was good. Why was it good? I think that's more of a like. And he needs to like sit and unwind. He's yeah. like, just give me like 20 minutes to just sit and Chill. unwind. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, I want to know what's going on. What's <laughs> why? Why do you look tired? Who upset you? Who pissed you off? Do I have to beat somebody up? What's going on? And she will. Yeah. She, this, so uh, this, there's going to be a bruise from earlier when I came in. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I think that's more of like a guy versus girl, man versus mm -hmm. female thing. You know, as a female, you're like, I want to know. Tell me, share your emotions with me. And as a guy, we're like, you have a problem? Can I fix it? Mm -hmm. If I can't, don't tell me about it. Yeah, Because, exactly. you know, Gino come to me with a problem. I'm like, well, have you tried this? And she's like, I just want you to listen. Yeah, just listen to me. I, I don't want you to give me a solution. Just, just hear me out. And I'm like, but you're giving me a problem. 
like you put a Rubik's cube in front of me and you want me not to solve it? Like, yeah. What do we do with this? You know? Yeah. But I, it's just a normal dynamic, I guess. Yeah, and that's why I have a lot of girlfriends because you can just <laughs> vent and, and do all that stuff. But guys, it's like, no. Yeah. I mean, dude, I don't know where you find the time to like <laughs> running a podcast, running an Instagram, a TikTok, a Facebook, dealing with all these builders, and she's still sitting here normal, like she's not even like tripping It's out. alcohol. Yeah, it's, it's alcohol, just, just having a glass of wine, but she's probably going to stop and then go shoot a TikTok video like right now. Oh yeah, it'll make me, it'll <laughs> be a great one too, because then so I'll have some of the good juices in me. And your mom, you got two kids. God. Yeah, but I'm, my life I'm, is I'm a stressing circus. out for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> but my life is a circus behind the scenes, trust me. It's like... But it's so like, composed up front. Yeah, it, it looks like I have it together, but it's, it's like I always have this analogy. I'm like a duck. It looks like I have it together, but underneath the water, my feet are like... <laughs> it's like this all 24-7, always something. Well, but you're fooling us for sure. Thanks, it's working. thanks. I appreciate it, dude. That's why I had you on the podcast. <laughs> like, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> I need to hear this. Nah, you earned it, man. I, I, I couldn't imagine... <laughs> like a day in your life like if you had to write down like what you're responsible for in a day and and how you manage it like would you be able to like itemize like all right today i had to feed lucas and i had to make sure justin wasn't mad and i had to go to work <laughs> and i had to make sure all my well, buyers in between that you get like realtor calls or yeah. like lender calls hey can you do this or what's make sure on? they're happy yeah and then still come home and be like oh gotta post on social media <laughs> Well, and then even like, uh, even with my kids, sometimes they know too. I'm like, okay, let me just post really quick. And then they'll be, you <laughs> know, you mom. have to, it's, it's just a balance though. But well, luckily, you know, I will say what helps out too is that Justin and like you and uh, Gina, when, since you guys know the same people, it does yeah. make it easier because you know those personalities, you know all those people. And I think you understand how the business works. Yeah. It would be hard, I think, if you have somebody that doesn't get it or that. Someone that isn't in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah and those can be relationship killers for sure. Like those new realtors that start off that have a partner that isn't in the industry. Yeah. And they're like, what are you doing taking a call at 8 o'clock at night? Yeah. It's like, Dude, exactly. Gotta work. Gotta work. But yeah, it's true. We, we do work with a lot of the same people. and. I mean, just last night, you know, I was getting text messages like at 8.30, like, hey, I need you to look at this file. And I, I don't have to say anything to Gina, you know? Like, yeah. I don't have to excuse myself. I'm like, oh, I'll be upstairs. Yeah. Be right back. She, exactly. she knows. It's like, dude, you got to work. And he's not like, and Justin's not like, why is Caesar texting or calling you? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it makes it so much easier yeah. that it's like, okay. You well, know, you know we're, we're on the like, same, yeah. everyone's on the same. So yeah. it does make it easier that we're not having to worry about that stuff. And you know what? The man lets me be me, so I'm like, hey. <laughs> He's like, you want to walk around with a pot on your head? That's fine. Like, <laughs> you do you. <laughs> He's just always like, what the hell are you doing? Dude, that, that video is hilarious. <laughs> but that's how I am. I'm going crazy. Yeah. The COVID is making me crazy. Dude, this COVID thing is, is crazy, man. It's like, what do you do with it? Like, you can't take your kids out. Your kids are used to being in school. Like, yeah. you can't do... Any of the fun stuff, you had all these travel plans and... I know, I mean, Gina and I are notorious for our, our Vegas trips. We love going to Vegas at least twice a year. Um, and this year we're kind of like, what happened? We can't go to Vegas, you know? And so it's like, you gotta stay at home, can't go out to bars, you can't go have lunch and can't vacation. And like you as a parent, you're probably like, hey, kids, drop them off at school, let the system worry about them for a little bit. <laughs> and now you're like, what are you guys doing here? Well, now Lucas wants to kill his sister every two seconds, so it's fine. It's just a phase. Yeah. I have a little sister. I, I, I tried it a couple of times. Unsuccessfully. Well, every morning <laughs> it's an adventure, so I'm always like, oh, my God, what is this kid doing? How, how, what's her age difference? Like two years? Well, she's 10 months and he's three years old, so like two. Two and a half. I, I don't know. It's a good long. little age. Well, yeah, if you see him together, though, he's, he is an <laughs> asshole, I will say. <laughs> who does I he love get, him. Who does he get that from? Justin. <laughs> Like, Did I like how you didn't think twice his, about he's that? He's for me. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, like when he's smiling, that's me. Yeah. Anything angry, it's daddy. When he, yeah, exactly. When he's not good, then no. I feel like I, I should stand up for my boss here. Like, am I going to get fired after this? Like, <laughs> It's fine. You're good. It's all good. I'm, I'm siding with your wife, man. That's what you want. So what is something that most people don't know about you? Some? Ooh. Um, okay. Yeah. Um. I'm a big sneakerhead. Uh -huh. I, I love buying sneakers. Um, you can't see it, but your dude over there, some your camera guy man, wearing some nice 350s, some of the OG 350s. Um, but I, I love I love shoes. I, I love I love sneakers. But it it was weird. I, I I wasn't always like big on sneakers. 
kind of it all started when I, when I started working. Um, I started making some money, and, and my dad would always tell me, hey, you can't buy Converse. Those are for cholos. Like, you know, and he was like, you can't have those. Those I used to wear those when I was younger. Um, are you serious? Yeah, dude, my dude, ask anybody. My, my dad was big on, like... Moms wear them, like, with dresses. Well, now, that. like, now. Like, yeah. I mean, that's a white girl thing. <laughs> We're Mexican. So my dad, like, he grew up in Juarez, and, 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 you know, cholos always wore the white Converse or the black Converse, and for a long time, he was like, you cannot have Converse. So my first paycheck, I went out and bought, like, two pairs of chucks. I was like, high tops, low tops, black yeah. Converse. And I didn't realize how much I liked sneakers until I bought that pair of chucks. And then I was like, yo, these are cool. I'm like, they're high tops. And then I was like, oh, they got some Jordans over there. And you got some Adidas over here. And I'm a big Kanye West fan. Yeah. And then he drops shoes. And I'm like, all right, I got to buy those. And then he drops another pair like every two weeks. So I'm like, I right, got to buy those. Got to buy those. Got to buy those. But I'm a, I'm a big, big sneakerhead. Like I, Which I, by the way, I had no... Fun fact is that Justin really wanted, my husband wanted a pair of Yeezys. <laughs> so me, not in with the in crowd, what was going on, um, I was like, okay, like, he said, like, can I have them for my birthday? I was like, all right, I'll just go online and, you know, order it. Thought. It'll be easy. Something like, you know, a normal pair of sneakers. Well, then I get you and Juan Suarez that give me like an education on Yeezy sneakers <laughs> and how they're, because I went online and I'm like, what? Weightless? What? <laughs> what? Like, I don't get this. Like, yeah. I had no idea what any of it was. And Dude, then, it's crazy. It's a whole society. It's like, like you got to know what time the shoe drops. You got to know what websites. You, you got to know what sizes sell at quick. You got to have your credit card. And like, it, it, it's, yeah, just to get a pair of, like, shoes, you're like, those shoes? And they're 220 bucks? Yeah. Like, not only do I have to fight for these shoes, but they're expensive. And then, yeah. so then I had to go, like, on the resale website and pay a lot more for it. But I was like... This is just insane. I'm like, I can't believe that yeah. it's that much for those sneakers. And yeah. I don't get it. I don't, I guess it's, and I, and I always tell people, because, you know, people come over and be like, dude, are you wearing a new pair of shoes? Yeah. Like, I'm like, it's like, they always ask, how many pairs of shoes do you have? And I'm like, listen, man, I collect shoes. Yeah, like, that's your, everyone's yeah. got their, yeah. that's Some true. people collect cards. Some people collect uh, uh, stamps and, and coins. I think just the new thing with the new generation is, is collecting shoes. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not gonna hate. I'm like I, I get it. I yeah. get it. I just was like I had no idea. It was literally. I was like, okay, go online, order it. But yeah. You're like I'm gonna go to Adidas. Yeah. Order some shoes, and it just didn't. And then it out. was like, no, bitch. Like <laughs> <laughs> that is not how it works. Uh, try again. <laughs> and then I was looking at how much. I'm like, damn, man, they're expensive. And the what? It, it's the older ones that are more expensive than the yeah. newer ones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's just some of them are like are some of them are harder to buy because they, they'll make like 10,000 pairs. Some of them, they'll make like 100,000 pairs. So depending on how many pairs they are and all that stuff, that, or how nice the shoe looks, yeah. like some of them will resell for a couple hundred bucks. Some of them will resell for a couple thousand bucks. So it's, yeah. But yeah, I, I guess to answer your initial question, something that people don't know about me, I'm a big sneakerhead. I, I love sneakers. Um, but Gina's, Gina's super understanding of it. She'll, she'll be like, yeah. hey, did you see these new shoes? Are you going to buy them? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's buy those, yeah. And sometimes she'll be like, ooh, I like those. Buy me a pair. And I'm like, what? You know, you know it's harder to buy a girl size shoes than it is a guy size in shoes? Why? Because they make less of them. So it's, she'll be like, can I get a pair? And I'm like, great. She's going to get a pair. I'm not getting smacked. Well, it was funny because like, even one was like, well, do you want to get one for your kid? I'm like, honey, if I ain't spending $200 on my <laughs> shoes, Lucas and Nicole are not getting the $200 pair of shoes. Hell no. I'm like, I love you, but that's just not going to happen. But it's funny, dude, that <clears throat> shoes is, like, the one thing that I'll spend real money on. Yeah. But, like, on my suits, I'm, like, I'm going to Perry Ellis, yeah. spending $100 on a suit. Yeah. And even then, I'm, like, oh, dude, it's a suit. It's 100 bucks. Like, that's a lot of money for a suit. And Gina's, like, really? I'm like, dude, you just spent $200 on shoes. I'm, like, yeah, but those are sneakers. Like, you know? You're, like, you can justify it. Yeah, I can justify it because I like those. Yeah. I'm, like, this is just work clothes. Like, I don't want to <laughs> buy work clothes. Like, but, yeah, it's... So like, I guess it's weird when you're like justifying like spending money. Yeah. That's spend true. fifteen bucks on a meal and you're like, ah, oh, whatever. But you're like, oh, God, I gotta spend fifteen bucks on anything else that isn't food and you're like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Like fifteen dollars <laughs> goes a long way if it's not, you know, McDouble, some fries. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear or not alcohol. <laughs> or, or alcohol, yeah. That's for my sure. kryptonite. Dude, for sure. Like we'll we'll go to a total wine. We just got a total wine here in El Paso. Which I'm obsessed with, by the way. Dude, I love that place. 
I love that place. It's like a walk in and it's... Yeah, you walk in and it's like, hey, you want to sample this wine? Or you want to sample these, this whiskey or whatever? We got a little reserve in the back. You want to come in here? Yeah, let's take some shots. And they're so knowledgeable. Like if you ask them like, hey, they're like, look at these options. And it's not even the most expensive ones. They're like, these yeah. are these will work and they, they're just as great too. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of uh, like employees there that are, I guess they were like these named tags and they're like experts in vodka or experts in whiskey. And uh, we've been in there and we're like, hey, we're looking for this specific vodka. And the lady will be like, hey, buy, buy the knockoff brand, like the, the, the store brand. Yeah. It's just as good and it's like $10 cheaper. And you're like, what? This vodka is amazing. It, it is. Yeah. So what has made you <clears throat> like, what have you realized with the COVID, like not being able to travel, not being able, what has, what have you started appreciating more? <sighs> Little things like just going out and having like lunch or, or meeting your friends at a bar. I mean, or, or even, you know, before it'd be like, all right, you know, I'm not going to work out today. I'm not going to go to the gym. I'll just go for a run at the park. It's like, dude, you can't go to parks, can't go to gyms, can't get, you know how hard it was to get a haircut? Like, you can't get a haircut. You, you can't go have lunch. It's just the little things that you were so used to. Oh, I'm going to go. I'll stop by, pick up some food after work. So yeah. you can't. Or getting off your car and I'm, I'm getting really bad at it. Or I've been bad at it. I have like 20 different masks. Like, you know, the cotton yeah. mask, the medical mask. Like, there's a bunch of different masks. And I have a bunch of them, but I still get off the car, go to the store, and I'm like, no mask on. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I guess, the, the adjustment of having to wear a mask and not being able to do your day-to-day, -day, like, I'm just going to go grocery shopping. Yeah. There's a line outside of Walmart. I'm going to go to Home Depot. There's a line outside of Home Depot. Yeah. It's an adjustment. It's just going to be strange to see what happens after. Like, are we going to readjust? Yeah. Are we going to keep these social distancing things in play? Like, are we going to treat the flu like COVID? Like, what are we yeah. going to do, you know? It's well, weird. and it's hard, too, because I think sometimes when you're meeting new people, too, like, I'm sure if you have anyone, well, do, no one's coming in the office, right? Or how does no, that work? I mean, I think I've met, like, in the last 45 days, I've probably had two people come into my office, and, and that's just because they walked in. But we're really, you know, encouraging people to apply online. Yeah. And it's just the easy thing to do, stay at home. And it's know. easier for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, in our industry, it's, it's hard um, to give someone that personalized experience because I've always enjoyed meeting people in person. Yeah. And you know, shaking their hand, mm -hmm. which can't shake people's hands. Shaking their hand, you know, showing them numbers on the screen, getting really personal and, and, and giving them that experience. You're having a conversation with someone face to face. You see their expressions. You see how they're reacting to certain things. You give them a payment. They're like, oh, so you, you get to adjust versus they apply online. You send them an email. And yeah. You know, and but it's, it's hard, but we've, we've been adjusting a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls. But yeah, I, I think I've seen like two different people physically in like the last 45 days. And how have you and Gina been during this time? Like, was it we, an adjustment for a while? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit of an adjustment. I mean, we, we had our routines, go to work, get out, go to the gym or go grocery shopping and then go So home. it helped that you guys though went to work. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, like I said, we, we've been... We were deemed essential and, and we, we still continue to go in to work every day. We didn't, I mean, our quarantine was the weekends, you know, yeah. the weekends when we'd go visit her parents or my parents or go shopping or whatever. We haven't been able to, we just kind of stay home. Um, but it does help that part of our routine, which is going to work, is still something we're, we're able to do every day. Yeah, so it helps not to kill each other. <laughs> That and, and a lot of Netflix and video games. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so she'll be like, all right, uh, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm going to go play video games. You go watch Netflix over there, and we'll just chill for a little bit. That's how I'm about my housewives. I'm like, I'll watch it, and Justin's <laughs> like, I'll play Destiny. Like, Yeah, just for a little bit, I mean, because I mean, you can only be around. You can only have a conversation with someone for so long, even if it's your significant other. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, you're like, all right, dude, we already talked about this. We already saw this show. Like, what are you doing now? Just unwind and have a glass of wine and do some Netflix. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, my life is boring now, so there's not really, like, too much that changes every day. I Especially now, like, you, you know, you can't go out with your friends or you can't, like, say, oh, that girl was wasted last night, you know? Well, dude, like, like realtor tours. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. we're in May. They're, I haven't seen a realtor tour all year. Yeah. Like, all these, all these builders that would host realtor tours, open houses, Wine Wednesdays, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Saturdays, mimosas for open houses. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no cheese me either, honey. No good gossip. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> You're like, what the Nothing. hell? Yeah. But I think that's been, the, that's been the hard part, too, is like trying to uh, do that inter human interaction. But it's like awkward when you meet somebody right now because obviously every, everything's opening up 
and it's like, okay, I can't hug you. I yes. can't yeah, shake it's your awkward. hand. I mean, it's like socially awkward. Yeah, like I mean, you you're you grow up with these like these these uh, these ideas of being respectful of like, hey, you meet someone, you shake their hand, you see yeah. a family member, you hug them, and now it's like you can't, you shouldn't. It you know. You're, gonna, you're not going to wear a mask? You're going to shake this person's hand? What are you trying to do? Kill them? Yeah. Trying to get them infected? It's like, oh, dude, it's, it's like, where, where's, where's the fine line with that? So how have your parents been? Have they? Uh, pretty good. Um, my parents are still active. They, they still work. Uh, they're also part of that essential list. So they've been able to go to work. But it's hard, like, having to babysit your parents. Like, hey, mom, you can't go to the store. Like, you shouldn't go to the store. And if you do, you got to wear a mask. Mom, what are you doing? Oh, I came to Walmart. Just... Mom, like you're supposed to stay at home. Stop yeah. trying to go to the stores. So you do with a ton of the new builders. What are some of the your favorite builders right now? Dude, you can't put me on the spot like that. Well, or like, what's your favorite <laughs> style? Like, I know, I know, it's like picking your favorite child. There's none, but um, I think every builder has their own different, unique style. Uh -huh. So I've just been able to to adjust. You know, what I mean, some builders want status every Monday and every Friday. Some builders are like, we'll text you sporadically, like, hey, are we still closing? Yeah, we're good. Um, but I think, you know, for the most part, I I don't think I have a favorite builder. Um, or like their gonna, style of home. I'm not gonna shoot myself in the foot. Or uh, their style of home, which ones? Style of home, uh, some of my favorite homes for sure have got to be Palo Verde Homes. They, they build a really, really nice product. Um, Edwards, um, Fortune Custom Homes. Um, I think those are probably some of my, my top three. Um, but, you know, Palo Verde is, is really, really nice. Yeah, they have they have really nice houses. Yeah. I love their design. They got, like, a nice little system, too, though. I mean, it's, again, not my favorite builder. Maybe my favorite <laughs> builder. Um, but they, they got a really good system. You know, they got a closing coordinator. It just seems like they they got everything so put well, yeah, so well put together. Not saying that anyone else doesn't, but yeah. they're, they're, you know, always great with the follow-up. And it's just a smooth process, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think every... I think in order to run a business well, you have to have a really good system, and I think they they do have a good system. Yeah, just seems like they have everything in order. Yeah, I'm like you. You never know, but I'm like they <laughs> they do for sure. So with everything going on, where you getting a lot of calls, like are you, are you guys at like zero percent interest rates or what's your yeah. interest? <laughs> so that was uh... <laughs> like I mean I saw it too, and I was like, what's the interest rate? We got to refinance our house. Just like okay. that was funny. I, I think it was maybe like a month ago and I don't know where that article came from but it was like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal and it was like this big article with like red letters the Fed drops the rates to zero and I was getting calls and screenshots hey I need to refinance to my zero percent I'm like well that's it's really not how it works you know the Fed will set the rate as to what they're gonna lend the banks money to yeah and then the banks still got to make some money on top of that yeah but it's like, what do you mean it's not 0%? Yahoo and MSNBC just said that the rate's at 0%. It's like, well, unless you're a bank borrowing money from the Fed, yeah. it ain't at 0%. <laughs> but it was so, it's, it's like, how do you, it's, it's, it's like to explain to someone, like the Fed is at 0%, but you don't get it, like, and you're just being annoying, like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you still got to do it, like, in a polite way. Like, yeah. you know, someone that, that's never dealt with finances, and help them understand that the, what they're seeing on TV and what they're seeing on, on, on Facebook and social media isn't really, you know, the, the true nature of, of what we're doing. And, and that's not yeah. the rate you're going to get. But it's... I, I always tell people, like, if it's too good to be true, then it's not true. It or is. there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah. Because there's something that's free. Yeah. I mean, but it was, it was, weird. It was, it was a weird week. We can, I mean, people were coming into our offices... Um, and saying, you know, you guys service a lot of the loans too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We we have over somewhere between like nine thousand, like ten thousand loans that we just service, and we continue adding every single month. But you know, these these people making their first payment, we're like, I just closed on my loan, and the rates are at zero percent now. I want a zero percent rate, and it's like, well, sir, what you gotta understand, and then you gotta, and yeah. then they're still like, so why is the internet giving me information? It's on the internet. It has to be true. Yeah. And you're like, okay. So you got to take a little bit of time to try, to try to educate them. And then even then, they'll be like, all right, I'm going to another bank. Come ask them. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, at, during that, even now, you get so many different viewpoints on COVID or what's going on and stuff. And when it first started coming out, it was like news left and right. And everyone yeah. didn't know what was happening and stuff. And I think people didn't know 
what was true and what wasn't true. So I think you had to like educate them and say, no, this isn't going on, or yes, this is, or what's going on here. No, it was just, I mean, we, as a society, I think we just get blasted by, by information. You know, you turn on the news in the morning or you turn on the TV and like, good morning America will have like a ticker in the bottom. 50,000 new cases, 300 new deaths, and you're like, oh my God, everyone's dying. Like, I don't want to go to the store because I'm going to get sick. But you kind of got to be able to take the information and digest it and really take what, what you know to be true and, yeah. you know, digest that. Has it, has it affected you, like, going out or anything like that? Or? Well, I've, been, I've definitely been a little bit more cautious. I mean, you know, when we go to the store, do the whole mask thing, keep the distance, a uh, little hand sanitizer before we get in the car, leave the groceries in the car for a little bit before you bring them in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, you know, we, we tried to eat not, we try not to eat out as much. Yeah. So that we're not exposed by a bunch of people, but yeah, it's, I mean, I guess it's changed really everything. Yeah, yeah, it has. And I mean, I feel bad for like my friends that own restaurants and stuff right now. Yes. They're going through a difficult time, yeah. um, especially cause they had to like, uh, one of my friends was telling me that they didn't even like tell them, Hey, we're going to pass this in two weeks. You're going to have to, it was just like. Yeah. Boom. And so yeah. they're like, we had so much food. We had so much stuff that we had to literally give away all of our staff and stuff. And so um, I feel, I definitely feel that they got hit the hardest for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the industry, uh, the food industry, bartenders, waiters, um, servers, all these people that, that were selling food just don't have a job anymore. It's a lot of curbside pickup. So you don't go in, you don't, you don't get the tips. Yeah. You know, a lot of these waiters that or bartenders, waiters that, that get tips and don't claim a lot of their tips. And then there's a stimulus check and they're like, man, I haven't filed taxes in like three years. Yeah. And they don't get any of that money. So it's, I think a lot of, a lot of people in the food industry are struggling for sure. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's a definite one. But that's why you gotta keep it local. Mm -hmm. You know, no noisy water from that's our sister true. city in Reno. That is true, you have to, do, you definitely have to support local. So what are some, <coughs> what are the things that you guys are planning like wedding wise? Are you guys, have you guys planned it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, no, uh, this we, is to get to know you personally. So <laughs> I'm like, no, we, um, you know, we, we haven't really been in a in a big rush like, I mean, to, to get married. Yeah. Because um, you guys have been together forever. So. Yeah, this year will be seven years. And, and last year I was like, all right, we've been together six years. It's time to put a ring on it before you know she goes Beyonce on me and so. It leaves your ass. Yeah, it leaves. She's like later loser. Uh, but no, we we got engaged last year. And, and we always knew that coming into 2020, a couple of our friends were going to have weddings and, and they were going to plan out their wedding. So we were like, all right, we'll take 2020 to vacation, to party, to go to these weddings. And then we'll start planning our wedding somewhere in 2021. Yeah. And then this whole COVID thing comes in, can vacation, all these weddings are pushed back. So now all my friends are getting married next year. So now we got a vacation next year. So now it's like, we're sitting here May 2020 talking about maybe getting married 2022. Yeah. You know, if, if this thing kind of cools off, but, um, you know, thankfully Gina, Gina's super, super understanding. She, you know, zero pressure from her, her parents or my parents, you know, to, to get married or yeah. have the big bash or, or have that big destination wedding somewhere in Mexico. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, yeah, she's, she's, she's amazing, man. She, she, uh, she knows what she wants. She, she, you know, we're both on the same page about what kind of wedding we want, who we need to be there. And so, and because we work in the same industry, it's been super easy to, all right, we'll just do it later. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I think, like you said, you guys have been together a long time. You guys aren't going anywhere. Yeah. And you have you have time. So yeah. it's not like you guys don't. Are you getting pressure with kids? That's yes. probably more oh pressure than what you guys are getting from the world, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. yeah, our parents are, like, really wanting us to have, uh, you know, to, to eventually have kids. Um, but I was, I was telling you earlier that, uh, you know, every time we, we talk to our parents and we're like, Hey, you know, we just did, we just got a dog and they're like, Oh, well, that's, that's nice. You, you got yourself a puppy. What about the kids? What about the kids? <laughs> <laughs> um, or we'll tell them like, Hey, you know, we're, we're planning. Can we talk to you guys? And they're like, yeah, yeah, what's going on? Oh, we're planning a vacation. Yeah. And they're like, okay. So it's like you right now, they're kind of in a phase where like, what about the kids? Come on, give me some good news about the kids. Yeah. But, I mean, not, I don't I want to say pressure, but they're for sure wanting some kids. Yeah. So what advice do you have for anyone that's, like, together with their spouse right now um, that has been together a while? How do you guys keep keep it alive and keep your relationship um, going? Well, 
Man, I'm deep in here. I know, I am pissed. People <laughs> want to know. It's like they know you're a good loan officer, but well, I, I, mean, need, I, I need to get the scoop. I need the deets. I mean, for the record, I don't think I'm, I'm the authority on uh, relationship counseling, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but you guys have you guys have a good relationship. You've been together you. a long time. I feel like it's a pretty normal one. Yeah. Well, I, I guess a lot of the, the healthy side of it is is <clears throat> when we first got together, it was it was weird. You know, we, we moved in uh, three months of being together, and, and our people didn't understand, like, why are you guys doing that? And we were both in a stage of our lives where we were like, if this is going to work, we're going to figure out now. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not going to, you know. Waste time. Yeah, we're not going to waste time. We're not going to date for two years and then see if you move in. We moved in, like, three to four months into the relationship. Uh, we were like, all right, if this is going to work out, we're going to find out now. Otherwise, we're just going to move on down the line. And, I mean, it wasn't, definitely wasn't easy. Yeah. There's a lot of conflict, a couple of breakups here and there, um, a couple of. But you were also young, too. <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. it wasn't like 30s dating. No, no, it was, it was still, I mean, we were like 24, 23, yeah. 23, 22 when we started dating. Um, but, you know, we, we were always on the same page. We were in the same industry. We had the same goals. And, and we were just talking about this the other day where we're like, hey, we, we set up a goal. We set up a time frame. And Gina's amazing when it comes to, like, finances. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'll, I'll go out and have a great month, make some money. And I'm like, all right, here's the money. You do it. You do it. Yeah. And then she's got spreadsheets. She's got like, you know, she, she's really good with all that. But she's kept us on track with having the same goals. And I think to answer your question is having the same goals and being, being on the same mental mindset with your partner yeah. about where you want to go next. You know, we always talked about when we wanted to buy a house, we wanted a house to be here and we wanted a house to look like this. Yeah. And we want, you know, so we've always been on the same page. When we bought our house, it was a house we wanted in the subdivision we wanted. Yeah. And we were just, it was about open communication. And I think that's, that's the biggest factor in, in a healthy relationship is, yeah. is just communicating openly. I mean, do you know when you're watching this, I'm sorry, <laughs> but she'll come up to me sometimes and you know, I'm in a bad mood or whatever. She's like, you're pissing me off today. You have a shit attitude. Like I'm over it. And she'll walk away. Yeah. But it's like, you know, like in a healthy relationship when you're just wanting to keep someone happy, you, you wouldn't say that. Yeah. But we're open enough where it's like, dude, you're being annoying. Go figure that shit out and come back. Yeah. No, I think, I think the more uh, open you are in your relationship, the easier it is. And yeah. I feel like the longer you've been with that person too, you know yeah. their hot spots too. Well, I guess it's like farting, right? <laughs> yeah. First, you don't want to like fart in front of them or call them out. But then it's like after a while, you're like, hey, you're kind of messing up here. Let's, let's revisit this. Let's figure this out together. Yeah, and I think that that's what, I mean, it's not like you're never going to have conflict. That's not real. Yeah, dude, that's super unrealistic. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you, you can, it's all rainbows and butterflies, and then another day you're fighting over a fork. You're like, oh. what? You forgot to wash this fork? What is wrong with you? You're responsible. And then it's like, well, let's build up. Let's talk yeah. about it. Let's see where it really came from. Yeah, I get a twitch that builds up. Like, <laughs> what? Is that, is that why Justin comes in with some bruises sometimes? Oh, yeah, I'm like... You, you didn't. <laughs> what you do you mean know? you didn't feed Lucas? You were taking a nap. I was like, you didn't see the salsa in the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> like, and yeah. it's right there. <laughs> Dude, that, that, uh, I guess that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the time, too. All the time. It's like, oh, you didn't get this. Well, just move your little hands. I'm just <laughs> and check it out, and it's right there. I mean, I don't want to call Gina out, but, but I guess it's like, um, like suggestive requests mm -hmm. like you know we'll be in bed watching tv and she'll want water or something from the fridge and she won't say hey babe will you get me water mm -hmm. she'll be like are you thirsty mm -hmm. and i'll be like no why she's like are you sure you're not thirsty because there's a gatorade in the fridge <laughs> and if you bring this gatorade we can both share so i'm like do you want a gatorade just say you want a gatorade yeah you're so, like well do you guys have a two-story house or a one-story it's a two-story house but our, our master's downstairs that was all her. That was for sure. That was all her. That's like that's why it's it's easier because like I, we have a two story and our master's upstairs and the uh, kids are. So you gotta. It sucks. Yeah. I'm like I will never ever do a two story ever again <laughs> after that. Are you like hey? And I'm, Justin's like it's not so bad. I'm like well you're not the one doing laundry and being like a swell all day. Oh, that, so like you like your uh, washer dryers downstairs. So you gotta yeah. most of it like we go upstairs. First world problems. Just saying, but <laughs> it's like I get it. I get it. That's true. It's like, oh, I got to go upstairs to my big house and got to go to my master. I mean, I, I ain't the fittest bitch here, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to sweat either. I don't need this to come off. <laughs> You're like, you know how hard it is to put on this makeup and then be going up and down the stairs yeah, all day? Yeah, like, no. So, 
So when anyone's looking to apply for a loan, where do they go to get your information or how do they get your information? So um, right now, we, uh, like I said, we're, we're focusing on getting our customers to apply online, stay at home, be safe about it. Uh, but rmm, rmmc.com is, is our website. You can go on there to apply online. Um, I, I just don't want to shamelessly promote myself, but we have a, a list of other loan officers that you can definitely work with. Uh, we have a branch on the east side. We have a branch in the northeast. We have tons of experience uh, with our loan officers. Um, all of them are bilingual. Uh, we're all licensed in Texas and New Mexico, so we can help you with your loan. And you can get your bundle B insurance from Texas, New Mexico, the bundle B as well. Um, but yeah, we're, we're asking people to apply online for the most part. Um, and I guess you can, I don't want to blurt out my phone number, right? Just put it in I the mean, comments. I mean, you can. Right? I mean, I, yeah. I do. My phone number is everywhere. Yeah, we'll blast out our phone number. But yeah, for the most part, we're asking people to apply online. Um, for those that don't have access to like a computer, we're, we're calling them up, getting their authorizations, and, and then just taking all their info over the phone. I gotcha. And what's your number? Uh, my phone number is 915-240-1376, uh, 915-240-1376, in case I mumbled a little bit. You're fine. <laughs> so how is it, how important is it to have a good relationship with each, like the home buying process is very stressful, mm -hmm. so what would you recommend to anyone that's the first time buying a home? Is it to have patience or what would you recommend? Yeah, definitely patience is a big, big thing right now. Because um, I know you guys asked for like everything right now oh too. yeah we, we asked for for a list of, of documents but um not only because of everything going on but i, I think as a first-time home buyer i look back at when i purchased my home I was, I was blessed enough to to know the industry and to know how everything works but you know someone that's never been around the home industry yeah has a regular eight to five job wants to buy a house and and they don't know how many people are involved in their transaction yeah from the sales rep to the title company, to the insurance company, to the loan officer, to the processor. So patience is, is, is really, really important right now because some people are working from home. Yeah. And, and some people don't have the availability to come into an office and, and, and work from home or, or work from the office. But it's also super important to understand that these processes take time. Sometimes, a, 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 like I got a contract the other day um, from a, a resale client and they were like, hey, we wrote up the contract today and we want to close in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I tried, I tried not to, I mean, I chuckled a little bit. I was like, well, buy the lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> You're better off getting that one. <laughs> so, so I explained to the customer, I was like, well, you know, I, I can appreciate you being so eager and wanting to get into your home. But first of all, we got to get you pre-qualified. Got to put your credit. We got to look at your income. Then we got to talk to your employer. Got to make sure that all the information you gave me was accurate. And then we got to have the title company run a title check on this property, make sure that there isn't anything on there. Then we got to order an appraisal on your property. That whole process alone takes seven to 10 business days. Yeah. And, and a lot of these appraisers, I mean, I don't know if you've seen some of them are older gentlemen, yeah. older women. And they're like, hey, I don't want to go into this home. Or So there's less appraisers and those appraisals are taking a little bit longer. Where before, you know, most closing days were 25 to 35 days out. Because of the limitations we have, some of these closing dates are like 30 to 45 days out. Yeah. So I guess if you're a new first time home buyer, it's really important to make sure that you set the expectation with, with your realtor, with your loan officer, um, and with your builder to know that this is what the process is going to take. Um, I mean, just getting pay stubs from your employer while you're working from home can be a challenge. I mean, I have, I have customers that are like, hey, I haven't been to work in two months. Yeah. Like, how do I get my pay stubs? I say, well, you got to call HR or call corporate. So some of those little things that were really easy to get before, yeah. which is harder to get. Yeah, and and I think too that they don't, they might not understand, like you said, all the people that are involved in it. It's not something yeah. an appraisers right now. It is taking a long time to get home yeah. appraisals. I mean, you guys have to do home inspection too, right? Like, mm -hmm. well, if luckily we have Google, but if it's like an older <laughs> home, <laughs> I'm like, we have Google. Back in the day, it was, it was dude, a I remember, um, I forget this gentleman's name, but you guys had a, you had a guy, right? They would go out and do your inspections. Waldo. Waldo, oh man. The dancer. <laughs> yeah, shout out to you, Waldo, if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Did I remember you guys had that truck with, with like your uh, your metallic tags on it, right? Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. And, and I remember calling in and be like, hey Victoria, I need a I need a quote. She'd be like, All right, let me just send Waldo out there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well and then he was he is 
kind of creepy. So <laughs> people would be like, he wouldn't explain why he was going to a home. He was um, showing up, kidding on his ladder. And then like <laughs> taking pictures. And obviously if your mom and your kids are home. There's some dude outside in his truck just climbing your roof. Yeah, taking pictures of your house, you'd be a little bit worried. And yeah. uh, I think, well, not I think. I know he had the gun pulled out on him twice because people were scared about him being on the property, which it was justified. Like, I it's understand, Texas. but I was like, did you explain yourself why you went to the home? No, okay, well, <laughs> then you were gonna get shot, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you should let some people know why you just pulled up to their house. But luckily, thank God with Google and um, you know all the companies that we do have flexible underwriting and stuff now, so it's yeah. a lot, it makes it a lot easier too. That's for sure. And that's crazy, I, I do remember those days, you know, when it was like, all right, we gotta go get this home inspected. Mm -hmm. But I mean, technology solved a lot of those problems for you guys, right? It did, it makes it a lot quicker. And then like I said, we have over 80 options. So if one option doesn't work, then we go to another one. So, so it's like diff 80 different companies or like 80 different underwriters? 80 different carriers. Oh, wow. Is that? Plus. Is there even that many insurance companies? There I mean, is. I could probably name like four. There's a ton. Like 80? Yeah. That's crazy. It just depends, like here's the thing with insurance, um, like you go State Farm, Farmers, Allstate, they want a certain group of people. So they want somebody like that doesn't have any claims, that has good credit, that has maybe a new home. Um, let's say you have a lot of claims like myself that has like <laughs> a kind of a sketchy driver record. I mean, I was there with you. I yeah, know. it's fine. I mean, yeah. I tap, it happens. you know, I tap cars a little bit, but <laughs> I wouldn't even call it an accident. But I think for a lot of the insurance carriers, they don't want that appetite um, because they're like, that's too much of a high risk. Or now, actually, your driving record affects your home insurance. What? Your driving yeah. record? Yeah. So, so what they're doing is they're grading these, these insurance policies, kind of like what mortgage companies do. It's like, all right, this is an A customer, a B customer. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, and so now the beauty part about having all these different carriers is we have them fight the business with each other. So they're like... Y'all figured out. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> like, okay, well, if you don't want it, then this other company will want it. And you do get the best coverage and the best options. So that's what makes it nice, too, because when you represent one company, there's not too much you can do. And they're really wanting to control, like I said, credit, claims. Um, I know Allstate or Progressive does that thing where you put the chip in the car. Oh, yeah. that. that don't um... do it. Don't do <laughs> it. What is it? Uh, the drive safe? And... Yeah. Like. We know your ass ain't driving safe, it's fine. Yeah, but don't like, do it because it just makes them have more of a pull on what's going on in your car. And you don't, the less information they know, the better. Well, I feel like that's even like an invasion of privacy. Like we wanna know where you're at, how fast you're driving. Well, they say they get a discount, but it's not really that big of a discount. It's like when you get a home security, it's not that big of a discount. I feel like Progressive's gonna go onto your YouTube channel and shut you down. Oh my God, this girl's- Well, I have Progressive. <laughs> I have Progressive. Slandering us. No, I mean, Progressive is great. I have Progressive myself. <laughs> You're at home taking off that chip. They, Don't they do took, it. They it's took good. all this girl's claims. So, I mean, I'm okay. But um, just if you are in that situation where they're like, oh, let's put the chip. Don't do it. But yeah. um, it does make it nice that you do have those options. And yeah. just like um, with mortgage, it's nice that you guys have the options with the rates and the builders and, and all that. Yeah. yeah. So, I think it's great. That's good, though. I mean, I remember when I first bought one of my earlier cars. I hadn't even bought it yet. And I called you guys. And I was like, hey, can I get a quote on this car? And you're like, uh, it's so a you, got a, you got a bit of a speeding ticket and a little bit of a love, love tap going on over there. Um, your insurance payment is going to be more than your car payment. So I was like, all right, I'll buy a different car. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's how it goes with, with um, all of them. And then people like too, they get all weird when we ask for socials, uh, which when we ask for socials, it's not for us. It's for every insurance carrier in Texas. Do you get to pull credit? No, it's a soft credit score. Um, but we don't know what the credit is. We're not a bank, so we're not financing their stuff. What, what it does is it pulls up their claim history and it also pulls up from what the insurance pulls up their credit, but we don't know. So you can tell with the rate how much it is. So essentially you want to know if these people have like outstanding claims. Yeah. And, and that's how it pulls up. Well, you know, it's funny, like, I guess now that you brought up credit, um, a lot of people are, are really are becoming or trying to become credit savvy with credit karma or paying mm -hmm. these subscriptions with Experian. So I guess maybe maybe we should talk about the industry a little bit. Yeah, how is that? Because <laughs> like, I, I do see like the credit karmas, the, all that stuff. How accurate are those? So what people have to understand with credit karma is credit karma is monetizing your information. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but you do have to understand that by giving them your information, they're going to sell it to a bunch of different lenders, credit card companies. 
but they'll in turn give you a score. And, and I think it's a good tool to have if you're yeah. okay with having your information out there. But the score that they're giving you isn't a true score. Oh, can you hear my stomach? <laughs> I'm like growling. <laughs> Sorry. You're like, let's just Yeah, yeah. yeah my bad. Um, uh, but Credit Karma is, is a good source to have because they'll tell you if you've ever made a late payment, if anyone has a collection on you. Um, you just have to understand that your information is out there. You're willingly giving them your information yeah. to share with, with all these credit companies. Um, the, the big discrepancy with them is companies like Credit Karma, TransUnion, Equifax, they're giving you a score based on a Vantage 3.0 model. And that's not what you know, most lenders use. I think it's like 85% of the, of the nation's lenders use FICO. Mm-hmm. That's a different scoring module. So some clients will come to me and tell me, hey, I pay Experian $25 a month and they say I have a 700. So I have to explain to them, Experian is a, is a credit repository. Yeah. Their main job is to store your information and then sell it to, to, to lenders mm-hmm. or to whoever's requesting the information. But Experian isn't FICO. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's different. They can give you a FICO score, but it's not going to be the same score that we pull. Their job is to, restore, to store information as a, as a credit bureau, but not to give you a true score. So it's, I mean, now in the generation where people are getting really credit savvy, following their credit karma, and, and then seeing 0% interest rates online, yeah. you know, that we get a call and, and you get a bit of a knowledge, more knowledgeable client. It's great to work with them, but it's also great to set the right expectation, explaining the difference between what a Vantage score is versus what a FICO score is, and why credit karma is so different than what we're pulling. So would you recommend like a credit car- karma or? I personally have credit karma. Um, because again, it's a good good tool to have so that you know if there's any new collections, any late payments, or what's truly affecting your score. But it's important to understand about them. And, and again, I'm not the guru in this. I'm a loan officer. I'm not a credit expert. But you have to understand that you're selling your information. You're willingly giving them your information to sell to other credit services, and you're getting back your uh, your your score. That's what you're trading for your score, your your information. Yeah, hmm. that's a good way. Any other advice for anyone that's going to be applying with you? Stay home, stay safe. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Caesar, for being on. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Pleasure having you on.